we first got to know our next guest speaker a few years ago at that fantastic job rally at the Los Angeles City Hall that we talked about earlier today. She spoke powerfully in support of six-day delivery and for the workers of Los Angeles. Now, she's been fighting for Angelinos for decades in one of the most legendary careers in the history of the American labor movement. Maria Ilana Durazo is the Vice President for Civil Rights and Immigration for Unite Here, which is the union for hotel, restaurant, and service sector workers. She's a native of California with deep ties to Cesar Chavez's form, Farm Workers Union, who has worked for decades organizing workers and building community coalitions to make life better for workers and for immigrants. She served as the Executive Secretary Treasurer of the LA Federation of Labor and helped bid, build it into a political and economic powerhouse with more than 600,000 members. Sister Durazo is currently the Vice Chairman of the Democratic Party. She recently returned to Unite Here to serve as a national officer, and it is truly an honor to welcome Maria Elena Durazo to the NALC convention. Please join me in doing so. This land is your land. This land is my land. From California, well, to the New York Island. From the Red Hot Forest to yes. the Gold Street. Hello. Sisters and brothers, Woo. it's great to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you, President Orlando, officers, executive council, and leaders from all over the country from your great union. Welcome to Los Angeles. And I want to say, as a member of the executive committee of our Tourism and Convention Board, I truly thank you for returning to our great city after a 75-year absence. We miss you guys. And of course, uh, encourage you to use our union establishments that we have all over. I'm sure that's been provided that uh, our union sisters and brothers that work for those establishments will greatly appreciate your support. First of all, let me thank you all for your solidarity in the labor movement. I had a chance uh, to meet uh, President Orlando while I served on the AFL-CIO Executive Council. I want to thank you for your great public service to our country. And greetings from our Unite Here members throughout the U.S. and Canada and our President D. Taylor. You know, I had the privilege of work, uh, to work closely with your union while I was leading this Labor Council in Los Angeles. Your leader in LA, president of Branch 24, and also a national leader in your union, Larry Brown, has been a trusted friend, a trusted friend. He was there in good times and in bad, leading your union, and as an active leader in the struggles of all Union sisters and brothers. He never flinched when it came to doing the right thing. He spoke up and he took action. And I want to publicly thank my brother for his friendship and for his support. Thank you very much, Larry. I also had the joy of working with your union every year for the annual food drive. Sisters and brothers, you have done God's work doing something magnificent to bring attention to hunger in this nation. You have also inspired hundreds of people to be union, to be volunteers, so that after you pick up all those, what, million pounds just in, in this area, Larry? You know, we had volunteers, you inspired volunteers to 
sort it, and then distribute it to union and community food pantries. Food that went to otherwise, when we had that great recession, well-paid construction workers who all of a sudden had no income for several years, or go to the families of retail workers who were let go after the closure of a Walmart store because they demanded union representation. Sisters and brothers, on behalf of those families that received the food, a very big thank you. Thank you. You know, I'm sure you've heard over and over about workers in most industries and how we have been attacked in many ways. I was on your picket lines on your issues, like keeping the six-day delivery, six-day delivery that residents not only prefer, but actually depend on for their own livelihood, social security checks and medications. But what about the sanctity of the mail service when it comes to our mail election ballots? I don't want my mail in ballot administered by a private sector corporation whose only motive is profit. Those corporations don't care about the privacy I want when I vote. And corporations prefer profits over whether or not my neighbor gets her medication on time. I say, hell no. I want my mail six days a week, and I want it in the hands of my brothers and sisters in the United States Postal Service. Yeah, there's a place for the private sector, but it's not in the Postal Service. And there's a place, obviously, for the importance of our public sector. But we have to be concerned about each other. All of us have faced attacks that have led to a smaller middle class. Today, regardless of whether you are a letter carrier or dishwasher, we need to raise wages, but through collective bargaining. That's a way to raise wages and keep our wages high. Now, boo-hoo, that may mean lower corporate profits. But I tell you, it means a greater and better America. My union members know it. Our union success proves it. Our hotel housekeepers and food service workers all make more money because of a union, all have family health insurance, and all care deeply about why most of them came to America in the first place. They came for opportunity and for their children. So what happens to them happens to America. There are many kinds of attacks on us, and we're all impacted. As we teach our children about the Statue of Liberty, and yet the political debate argues for replacing send me your downtrodden with send them back, the consequence to America is now. As we teach our children about America electing its first Catholic president in 1960, and as a presidential candidate wins his party's nomination by promising to ban people of one religion entering our country, the consequence to America is right now. How will a teacher write a lesson plan about the Emancipation Proclamation, or Martin Luther King, or America's first black president, and reconcile it to the election of a racist to sit at Barack Obama's desk. What happens to Muslims happens to us and happens to America. What happens to immigrants happens to us. It happens to America. What happens to parents at work happens to their children at home. You represent hundreds of thousands of professional, hardworking letter carriers. I represent housekeepers and convention center workers. But our differences are less important than what both of our unions have in common, a strong commitment to the working men and women through collective bargaining. You know, over 500 employees work for Donald Trump at his hotel in Las Vegas. 
And in December, they won a National Labor Relations Board election. The workers were ready to bargain their first contract for the same things that you and I bargain for our members. But Trump refused. He appealed. The workers won the appeal. Trump appealed again and again. The workers won again and again. This month, the federal government had to order Donald Trump to negotiate, and that was an order by the highest body in our federal government. But sisters and brothers, today he has not complied. But I tell you one thing, those hotel workers ain't going to give up until they win, and he better learn that lesson now. And that's why I pledge to you on their behalf that I will do everything in my power to defeat Donald Trump and elect Hillary Clinton. But you know, we didn't get into the labor movement to elect politicians. We got into the labor movement to build power for workers. We had a recent attack on the public sector through the Friedrichs case, and I'm glad that threat is over. That was a warning shot, a warning shot to get to work in the labor movement, all of us, you and me, your union, my union, because that case or another one like it could come back and we might not be as lucky. Because it's on us to organize our workplaces. And every time we leave it up to a politician or a judge, we're giving up our power. So what can we do? What's our strength? How do we win? Well, I don't read a lot, but Machiavelli in his book, The Prince, said, fear. I like to use the term respect. It's a more powerful weapon than greed. and We have the power to make politicians respect us. I'm not talking about making them afraid of us, that we will support their opponent or beat them in their election. Sure, that makes them a little afraid, but it never lasts, because they know we can't do that in every single election. No. My experience as a union organizer is that the best way to make politicians respect hotel housekeepers was to let the politicians watch those housekeepers destroy a hotel boss in the streets, on the picket lines, go to jail, last a day longer, no matter how long. Let the politicians come into contact with housekeepers that have lost their fear of the boss. That teaches them something. That teaches respect. Take the Atlantic City Trump Taj Mahal workers. On July 1st, they went out on strike to win back their family health insurance. It had been taken away through a series of manipulated bankruptcy started by Donald Trump. Today, Carl Icahn, another billionaire, is making the same decision to deny health insurance to those 500 workers and their families. He just announced he would rather close down the casino, just like the Waltons do when the Walmart workers decide they want a union. But let me tell you, those workers aren't going back unless and until they get what's right and what's good for them and their families, and they're not afraid of anybody threatening them. And as they say on the picket line, if they don't win, then shut it down. Shut it down. Now, you know what? That, to me, sisters and brothers, is power. That's the power of us as workers, as human beings. You can ruin a politician's day by becoming a problem that they can't stop and that won't go away, and that isn't going to listen to anyone's promises, but only going to listen to their actions. You see, when politicians see us do that, they see people with real power, people who don't need them, aren't asking for their permission or begging for their help. That's power. That's what it looks like. 
and organizing in our workplaces is how we get power, how we win what we deserve. That's what your members did starting New York City in 1970. That strike led to postal unions winning power to bargain for wages and benefits, the ability to arbitrate, contract disputes, enforce the rights of your members. I saw a banner that said, we are not going back to the PO until we get Congress and Mr. Nixon to sign a decent pay raise. Well, they did, and you won, because you did not beg for it, you fought for it. And that's why you won the respect. <laughs> Begging for help isn't what powerful people do, and we have to stop doing it. Because when we beg them to help us, we're saying we don't have power. And I say, you know what? Our only choice, our power, is when we raise hell, when we organize ourselves, be tough on one another, have a smart and disciplined strategy, beat the boss, and politicians will come to us. I believe, sisters and brothers, we are powerful if we want to be. How did the Memphis sanitation workers win? They didn't have any money. They had determined leadership at all levels. They had the passion to do whatever it took and for as long as it took to win. They had discipline. And when others tried to throw them off course, they withstood the criticism. They refused to resort to violence, but they never backed down. Sisters and brothers, our movement strength are the men and women that we represent. Let's act like leaders who are not afraid. Let's ask them to be strong leaders. Power is influence with a purpose. Our purpose is justice. Our purpose is equality. Our purpose is a good economic standard of living and opportunity for everybody. Our purpose is to give every generation that follows us a greater opportunity to fulfill their dreams. We have the purpose. Now let's build the power. When politicians see us do that, they're going to, when they see us act without fear, then they're going to be afraid to mess with us. Count on Unite Here. Count on our union whenever you need us in your battles. Count on our union to back you up. God bless you. God bless our country. And have a successful convention. Si sí se puede. This man is your land. Thanks so much for coming. How about a letter carrier chair for Maria Elena Durazo? Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Hip, hip.